Guru Tu discovered the laws of plant development, articulation, rhythm, varying repetition, enhancement or qualitative intensification, expansion and contraction, turning inside out. In a different sense, these also apply to the being of man. We consider things with regard to ourselves. Do we like them or dislike them? Do they help us or harm us? These are the criteria we first apply. In other words, our thinking, our feeling, and our willing are entangled, felted into the fabric of self-interest. And it must be so, as that same Goethe remarks in his essay usually known as The Experiment as Mediator Between Subject and Object. The greater challenge is to understand things on their own terms. Here we must renounce the criteria of sympathy and antipathy and investigate with the divine all-inclusiveness of the sun, as Goethe puts it, what is and not what pleases. As in the introduction to this series, we here arrive at the distinction between soul and spirit. Man is interwoven with the world, in a threefold way. The first way is something he finds as a given fact. By the second way, he makes the world his own affair, something that has a significance for him. The third way he regards as a goal toward which he should strive unceasingly Here is another characterization. Nature makes of man merely a being of nature. Society, a lawfully acting one. A free being, only he himself can make of himself. Nature releases man from her fetters at a certain stage of his development. Society leads this development to a further point. The final polish only man can give to himself. For further precision, we shall look at some basic findings of the anthroposophical investigation of the supersensory. The methods by which such discoveries are made will be the topic of a later installment. But once found, they can be tested by healthy thinking and an unprejudiced sense for truth. The body is more than the physical. Something prevents the substances of the physical body from quite succumbing to the chemical and physical laws they follow outside a living organism. This something brings about the life processes of breathing, warming, nutrition, secretion, healing or more generally maintenance, growth and reproduction. We call it the ether body. It makes the difference between a corpse and a living body, the difference between a stone and a plant. During the first seven years of life, the child lives in continual communion, 
This is a living in the life sheath of the family and of the entire surrounding world. The life body, or etheric subtle body, as it is also called, is not yet emancipated from the life womb of family and environment, is not yet born. The physical body is born. The etheric life body of formative forces generates the growth and formation of the physical body. During the first seven years, it replaces the entire inherited physical body with its own work, making it its own. Every cell is recreated, ending with the hardest, the teeth. This emancipation happens around the age of seven. The etheric life body is born. And a third bodily member establishes the organs of sensation and perception. It forms the otherwise more simply vegetative cells to nerves. This is known as the sentient body. In sleep, it disengages. When it does dip in, it causes dreams. The sentient body makes the difference between a plant and an animal. This too, though supersensory, is properly called a body, for we live in it as in a given sheath, and it too has its own birth when it is emancipated from the sensibilities of family and environment around the age of 14. The soul is likewise threefold. It can turn to the world of the senses and respond to outer stimuli with inner movements of sympathy and antipathy. This is called the sentient soul. Or the soul can turn to the world of spirit and acknowledge the absolute Thinking, when it is not instrumentalized, leads us beyond our own confines. The truth is true, even if all your personal feelings revolt against it. All truth and goodness that we bear within us is divine, immortal. This is called the consciousness soul. And between the two, in the middle of our being, lives the understanding Gemüt soul. Gemüt means something like heart and soul, inmost mind. This member of the soul has a dual nature, the soulfulness of the Gemüt and the rational intellect. It places thinking in the service of satisfying our personal needs and desires. For example, thanks to the mind-soul, people, people living in climates where no bananas grow can still enjoy bananas, or at least something resembling bananas. The development of the consciousness soul is still in progress in our times. The development of the human spirit remains largely a task for the future, though beginnings are already to be found. When we make the sentient soul our own, transforming it to selfless selfhood as a spirit being among spirit beings, it becomes the first stage of spirit known as Spirit Self. The Spirit Self raises personal feeling to transcendent beauty and goodness, to an individualized love of even the highest ideas. 
Life spirit is the transformed ether body of the still more distant future, when we shall generate life processes directly without the support of bodily processes. And ultimately, even our deepest and oldest member, the physical body itself, can be generated by spiritual activity. Incipient germs of this transformation can be seen, for example, in the phenomenon of shame, when our moral awareness that we do not measure up to our own true being affects us physically in the circulation of the blood. Hitherto, spirit man has been fully realized only once, at the original Easter. All these transformations are possible because the self, the I am, which is not shown in this diagram, lives in the soul and irradiates potentially our whole being, changing our sheaths from gifts given to us to our own achievement. The I makes the difference between an animal, taken as an individual speci specimen, and man. There are also simpler ways of viewing all of this. In our incarnated state, sentient body and sentient soul more or less merge. They are often referred to jointly as the astral body. The I strives from the middle of our being, and the consciousness soul merges with the spirit self. In this sense, we can also count seven instead of nine. Or we can consider the astral body and the spirit self as one and the same entity, partly untransformed, partly transformed, and likewise ether body and life spirit, and physical body and spirit man. Then we arrive at this simplified version, which is already enough to provide far-reaching insights. These members of man work in resonance with all the processes of the wide world, and their development is connected to the evolution of the universe. Therefore, the being of man is the key to understanding the world. And conversely, that is the method of anthroposophy.